and um, my name's Susan Zahn with MEA. I probably know lots of you. I'm gonna just go behind the scenes. You can feel free to chat me directly. Um, and before I hand it off to Trissa and her daughter, Maya, um, I just wanna go over a few logistical things. Um, you can chat me directly, as I mentioned, and if you haven't found the chat feature, um, you can uh, point your cursor to the bottom or top of your screen and the chat panel should pop out, or not the chat, your control panel. And then you'll see a chat button. You can double click on that and pull it out. So if you have any questions for Trista during the uh, webinar, feel free to send them to me. And at the end, I will ask her on your behalf. Um, I'm gonna take my webcam down. That should bring uh, Trista to full screen. Uh, but before I do, I just wanted to introduce uh, Trissa Carmen, she's a certified massage therapist and lead massage therapist at Elements Massage. And we also have her daughter here to help out with some of the demonstrations, Maya. So thank you for being here. Thank and with you. that, um, I will take it down and pass it to you, Trissa. Thank you, Susan. Hi, everyone. Um, as Susan said, my name is Trissa Carmen. This is my daughter, Maya. And we're here today to give you guys three self-care tips while you're working at home from your home office. So <laughs> tip number one has to do with while you guys are sitting at your computer, you when, when you're typing, you internally rotate your shoulders. And as you're doing this and sitting there throughout the day, you're starting to feel some tension in your neck and your shoulders. So um, I'm gonna demonstrate on Maya, and this is how you can do it on someone. And Maya's gonna show you also how you can do it on yourself. But I feel that when we get a pain in our neck, we automatically want to put pressure into it like this just to relieve the pain. And actually, that's not what we should do first. What we should do first is we should actually squeeze the muscle because when we squeeze the muscle, we're bringing water, blood, and nutrients into it. And that's what we need to really release an adhesion in the muscle. So, and you're just gonna hold it. So you just squeeze and you're gonna hold it. It's for about, I timed it last night, so it's for about 30 seconds. Um, Maya, would you like to show them how to do that? Go ahead. And so, so you're gonna take, if you're having issues on the right shoulder, you would take the opposite hand, so the left hand, and you can pinch it like, like Maya is. Can you get a little more in there? Yeah, a little more, there you go. And your fingers might slip off of it and that's fine. You do it for about 30 seconds. You can pump it and pulsate the muscle to get the blood, the water, and the nutrients in. And then when you're done, you can stop doing this, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and then when now when you guys go in to trigger point the area, you're gonna notice that the, you have a it's looser and you can get in a little bit deeper and it relieves some of that stress. The other thing you're gonna notice when you pulsate and grab that muscle is you're gonna feel sometimes a sensation, but that's actually the adhesion letting go. All right, and that's tip number one. Tip number two is gonna be for your feet. Now for this tip, you might need two things. One being um, a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball. And if you don't have either one of these, you can always use, um, you can put a bottle of water in the freezer and you can use this to roll your foot on. So what people don't realize also is when you guys are sitting, typing at your computer or sitting at your desk all day, as you're sitting there and typing, your hamstrings are also short. And then when you guys get up and start walking, it actually will change the gait as you walk, which can then throw off or create imbalances and muscles in the rest of your body. So it's really important to take care of our feet. So I'm actually going to bring up Maya's foot because when we do this, this self-care tip, it's really important to keep the ball or the bottle of water in between. I don't know. Can you guys see her foot? I'm so sorry. <laughs> So like this is your toe pad and this is your heel. Right in here is your plantar muscles. This is where we want to concentrate the ball or the bottle of water. Thank you, you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. So I'm gonna show you guys on my hands how we're gonna do this. And if this was my, the, the floor, here's my foot. You're just gonna rotate in a circle one way. I always say five times, but you can do more or less It's up to you. And then you're going to rotate the ball the other way five times, more or less. And you can do this while you're sitting or while you're standing, it, either or, whatever is comfortable for you. The other thing, when you roll the bottle, you're just going to roll it like this, just, just back and forth. And then you'll realize that after you guys do this a few times, your foot will be more relaxed. And that's tip number two. 
So for my final tip and the third tip, this has to do with the fascia in the body. Anybody who knows me, you guys yes. know I'm obsessed with fascia. So just for the people out there who are not sure what fascia is, it is a connective tissue in your body. It surrounds every bone, every muscle, yeah. um, organs, everything. So if you were to look at the body and envision it to get a better understanding, your bones are always pushing out. Your muscles are always pushing in to keep everything together. And your fascia is just that saran wrap or the cling wrap that wraps around everything to keep it together. And it's the first thing that's affected. So I'm gonna have Maya stand up because this is, we have fascia lines that, yes, please stand up, <laughs> that run through the body. And these fascia lines are the lines that I personally work with. And, that, and this is how I loosen and realign. So this, for today's example, we're gonna work with this called the superficial back fascia line. And just to give you guys an idea, this fascia line starts in your forehead. It goes all the way down through the back. It comes down here, it goes through the back of your legs, through the back of your feet, under your foot, and into the bottom part of your toes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a stretch that when you do this stretch, you should feel it all the way in your calves. Um, and the important part is to keep your head down and to also keep your knees straight and not to bend them because if you were to bend your head, you, you're gonna break the fascia line and when you bend over, um, if your knees are bent, it also breaks the fascia line. So you're gonna interlace your fingers together like this, and you're going to actually put your hands behind your head like this. And then all you're gonna do is like in gym class, when you guys had to bend over forward to touch your toes, we're doing the same thing, but we're keeping our hands interlaced behind our head. So I'm gonna have my hair bend. And as you bend, you don't wanna pulsate, you don't wanna pounce, you just wanna keep it, you just wanna stay bent over. Um, and you should feel that stretch all the way into the back of your legs. Now, Maya, just lift your head up. I'm going to show them something. Lift it up, please. When Maya lifts her head up like this, if you guys can see, um, that's when you break the fascia line. So you don't want to do that. It's really important to keep the head down. All right. Okay. Good. Uh, yeah. And that's tip number three. So they're really easy. They're really effective. I actually do them myself. And I just want to thank everybody for their time and for coming in to, to our little webcast today. And if you have any questions, um, you can let Susan know and she'll ask me. Yes, please type your questions into the chat box. Um, we are going to take some questions. If there's any, any of those that you want demonstrated again, or any questions about how to do them properly, uh, please Please type that into chat. We'll give you a couple couple minutes to do that. Um, and I just want to remind you that she is um, the lead therapist at Elements Massage. Uh, Trissa is, and um, they are located in Horsham. So um, I know we were on the, this webinar yesterday, uh, doing a, a run through, and um, a couple of us are really anxious to go visit Trissa once the once the 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 social distancing is lifted so okay right she's killing me yes yeah, so um, i know some people it was on a small screen in the beginning um i think some people got it figured out there is a way on your webcams um at the top of the webcam or video to click on speaker view or presenter view it might say um to get trissa full screen so if you could re-demonstrate that first one some people sure, absolutely i'm gonna have maya come a little bit closer yeah. Hey, give me one moment. What does that mean? Okay. okay, so so what we're gonna do is we're gonna squeeze. So your fingers and your thumbs. So if my yeah, so, yeah. so you're gonna take your hand and put your fingers in the back behind the neck and your thumb in the front, if you guys can see that. And you're gonna squeeze. Now turn your head straight for me, love. There you go. And you just hold it. And then you can pulsate it like this. And when you're doing this, it's bringing that blood and the nutrients in. And that's what's important to release the adhesion. And Maya, Maya have you, are you noticing anything? <laughs> yeah. What are you noticing? Uh, my neck has been very loose the past few days. Good, see? Yeah. There we go. The other thing you can do is if you're doing this on a loved one, you can interlace your fingers like this and you can use your palms. So you can go like this and squeeze your palms together. I do this on my legs, like on my quads, because they're a really large muscle. 
and they're hard to get to and they can get sore if you're working out. And then just squeeze back and forth. And Trista, I think the key yesterday that you mentioned, which was my takeaway, was that, that you, um, by squeezing it, you're getting the blood flow there rather than digging in, which is what people's first reaction is to, to sort of dig into the muscle, which is what I try to do. And at first, that's not going to help, right? Correct. Because when you go to dig into the muscle at first, you're actually pushing everything out of the muscle. It's, so you're pushing the water out, you're pushing the blood out, you're pushing all the food out. So that's why you don't want to do that at first. That's why it's really important to squeeze it. And, and you don't have to squeeze really hard either, Susan. You just squeeze. Oh, sorry. You can just squeeze lightly. When, all we're trying to do is just bring stuff into the area. And after you start feeling it get looser, your muscle in, in your neck or your shoulders, then if you want, you can go and apply some pressure and do the trigger point that, that you originally were trying to do to relieve the uh, pain or the sensation from the muscle. All right, I got another um, question. Someone said their neck, or this is actually a comment, great tips. Their neck has been hurting and now they have a solution. So they're very thankful. Oh, um, thank you, you're welcome, good. And then someone else is asking, can you provide us some tips to improve uh, their posture when working from home? Yes, so the one thing when, when you wanna improve your posture is you wanna roll your shoulders back. And the best that I found to do is to set a chime. A lot of us have um, you know, our smartphones now and they come with alarms on them. I just like to set a really subtle chime that can go off every 20 minutes. And that is just a reminder to, to, for you to take a deep breath, roll your shoulders back and sit up. The other thing is you can also go into a corner I can't unfortunately show that to you at this moment, but there's a way where if you're at the corner of a room and you could press in, having your hands one on each side of the wall by the corner, and then you just go in doing a lunge, that helps as well to help improve your posture. But I think the key is getting up every 20 minutes or once an hour is a big key. Um, I have another question here. Yeah. Thank you for, for that. Um, I actually used that one. I was prescribed that tip for physical therapy. Nice. Um, so can you use tip number one in other parts of the body? Yes, you can use it on the quad. And when I go, when I use tip number one, tip number one, you can use anywhere in the entire body just to, um, for simplistic reasons of the webcam. This was the best way to demonstrate it. But as I said, on my legs, I interlace my fingers and when I do my quads, I take my palms and put them on each side of my quad and I push up. And I do that on, and you can also do it on your, um, on your calves and your arm. I really do this technique everywhere, wherever I'm feeling sore. And, and when you push up with your quads, you push up with your actual quad and you're pushing down with your hand, is that right? Uh, you're pushing in. So it's like, mm -hmm. quite, it's like the motion is this. Okay. Yeah. You want your palms to meet each other and just hold it there in the quad and it'll sting because the quad's one of the largest muscles. So when, when there's an adhesion in that muscle, you, you know, you, yeah, it is oh quite yeah. the sensation. <laughs> and I got a, a couple other questions here. We have uh, uh, someone saying they, they, they're typing too much at home and getting cramps in their arms. Do you have any ideas for them? Yes. So I would definitely go into elements and get a massage. That's number one and have the therapist look at it. And because I'd see seven in your back, which is that there's a little bump on your back here. And, and it's no, it's actually up here. Oh, it's, here. it's here. And that's C7 right around at T1, which starts right after C7. That's called your brachial plexus. That's where all it's all these nerves. Um, come out for your arms and they go all the way down to your fingers. So as I was explaining earlier today, when you internally rotate your shoulders and you're typing, it actually changes the perspective of this hole. It's called a foramen. And in that hole is where all the nerves go through to get to your hands. So that changes. And that could be one of the reasons why you're experiencing the issues you're experiencing when you type. And a massage would be actu actually very, very, very helpful for you. Well, if, if it's your first time getting massage with someone asking, um, they haven't had a massage yet. Okay. Um, is deep tissue something they should try or is that too much to begin with? Susan, that is an excellent question. And I really appreciate you asking that because today everybody thinks that they should be asking for a deep tissue massage. At Elements, what makes us different and sets us aside is that 
we cater every massage to the client, specifically to the client. So when you come in, it might not be beneficial for you to get a deep tissue massage. And one of the therapists is going to tell you that. And then we'll, and we'll have a conversation. We're going to have like a few minute meeting. The client would explain the type of pain or sensations that they're feeling in their body. And the therapist will explain what they feel might be the best plan for that day. And it's not always deep tissue. Sometimes deep tissue is something that we have to work up to. And the other myth about deep tissue is that it doesn't always have to hurt. That's the other thing. Like, and and I, I like it better when it doesn't hurt. So there's a way to get into the muscles. The muscles will allow you to get into them without pain. It's not all the time, but right. more so than, than not. All right. Um, and a follow-up question to that. When, when is it best beneficial to get a deep tissue massage? Um, we have people who come in monthly or weekly. It depend. It really depends on the individual, once again, and it depends on what that individual is experiencing, um, and where. And it really depends on the individual. I mean, I hate to sound repetitive and to keep saying that, but it does. And that's something that you would discuss each time you come in for a massage with your massage therapist. All right. Um, I mean, I personally, not to interrupt, but personally, I love deep tissue, so I get it quite often. Right. Okay, so um, another question about someone sitting on a pill pillow while they're typing on a computer. Does that help or hurt your posture? That's a really good question, and I don't know how to answer that because I'm a visual person, and I need to see what type of pillow they're sitting on. Like, for example, I have a meditative little circle that I sit on that's full of buckwheat. That's really great to sit on. And so, but if you're sitting on a regular pillow, it depends what the pillow is stuffed with. I, I hate, you know, so I'm, I don't know how to answer that question, but it sounds like you're in pain. So I'm going to answer it with you. Definitely need to come in and get a massage. Right. Um, uh, let's see. I'm just seeing if there's any... Any other questions coming in? I would just like to say that massage will, is she said. beneficial for everybody. And I've noticed that people don't get sick as much when they come in for a monthly massage. And I feel it reduces stress. It reduces cortisol. I just, it's, it's something that I think more people should be incorporating in their health plan. I have definitely, I have, um, hand raise here um mags if you want, wanted to ask a, a question you can i unmuted you um oh well actually i did actually then ask it in chat okay you're good so i did but i i will say also that i am a huge fan of regular massage and i'm loving that we got some tips that can carry us over now until we're able to get back into our uh back to our massage studio and see our favorite masseuse so um happy for the tips Thank you. Uh, um, checking to see if there's any other questions. Yeah, I've also been told that it, it, it boosts your immune system following yeah. massage. Yeah. Something and, I know we're all interested in that right now. And if you're training, if you're an athlete and you're training, it really helps to increase cell turnover, which helps you build muscle. I got another question here. What is your take on children getting massages, especially for sports? Fantastic. I actually have really great clients that come in and I also see their children. The, we do have an age, an age when the kids are able to come in and get it done and the parents or, you know, the, the guardian have to sit in the room until they're at least of 18 years of age, but it's extremely beneficial. This little munchkin to my left here, I've been in this industry for 20 years. I've been doing this. My daughter <laughs> has had massages since she was an infant. She loves them. Wow. And I've tried, I, I test everything out on her. So I highly recommend it. And in other cultures, they're brought up that it's a common practice in the household and it's handed down throughout the generations as massage. Right. Well, if you're looking to adopt any more children. Come on. <laughs> I don't mind adopting. Just don't want to have any more besides you. <laughs> Count me in, they're saying. All right. All right, cool season. Whenever you're ready, you come in and see me. I'll take good care of you. Okay, good. All right. Uh, anybody else? Oh, here's another one. Um, how about a sore knee when getting up from seated at your desk? 
That I, it sounds like I, you can definitely come in and see me. I also do another technique that's called cupping. So we actually had um, Michael Phelps's cupper who cupped him. He came in and trained us in cupping. So I actually use that cupping technique for the knee on quite a few clients who are now regulars because of how much pain relief they get from the cupping. And so far, uh, it's lasted a week when I cup somebody's knee. Can you explain what that is? I've had it done, sure. but people may not know. So, so cupping, um, cupping, what it does is when, when a massage therapist goes in to do a massage and we're pressing in, we're putting pressure on the tissue. What the cupping does, it creates what's called a negative pressure. So I can actually get deeper into the muscle without putting any pressure onto the tissue. And it's bringing like what we discussed earlier today with those self-care tips, it's bringing blood, water, and nutrients into the area, which makes it a lot easier to loosen that adhesion. Now, I will tell you that if any of you do go and get cupping done, the cup should never be on you for over four minutes. It should, they should be coming off of you after four minutes. And the second myth I'd like to debunk about cupping is that you will often see that people have marks from the cupping. That is not a bruise. A bruise is when tissue is broken. So the cupping, is, the cupping mark isn't a bruise because we didn't break any tissue. We're just bringing blood and nutrients to the area. So it's actually aiding and assisting me to get my job done more efficiently. Got it, thank you. You're now, welcome. Now, and, since we, oh, go ahead. I oh, know, I'm sorry. And the last thing I'd just like to say why people and athletes really, use cupping a lot is because the benefits are instant. So they can actually get cupping done and go right into a sporting event where you cannot get deep tissue done and then go into a sporting event. Got it, interesting. Um, it, since we are all in essentially working remotely now and can't get out to get a massage, is there anything you could do for that knee pain while we're quarantined? I would say elevate and ice. Elevate and ice. Yeah. And I've had a couple requests for um, low back pain and uh, hip pain. Anything you recommend for that? Yes, that is, I recommend, this quarantine's killing me, can I tell you? <laughs> I mean, I recommend a massage. But for low back pain, there is actually, one of my friends who's a fellow therapist was showing me the other day, there's a way where you can sit crisscross applesauce on the floor. And then um, you start, you want to move in a circle like this and you start going to the left and you do circle rotations sitting crisscross applesauce. You start to the left first. He has me doing it 36 times one way and 36 times then to the right. And okay. that really helped my lower back pain. I was really impressed with that, but I've only done it a few times so far. All so right. Try that. Any other questions, please type them into chat. I'm just checking to see if I missed any. They're coming in fast and furious. Well, I don't see any coming in. We are coming up on about 1225. So um, with that, I wanna thank you uh, for showing us these tips while we are home and, and not able to get out to a massage ther therapist. Um, and I'm getting some nice comments with amazing idea for today. So, so thank you. This really was good and helpful. And I'm going to go try that crisscross applesauce. Yeah. 36 one way, 36 the other way and see if it helps my hips Start and my back pain. Um, so once again, thank you. And everybody, this was, uh, Trista Carmen. She is the lead therapist once again at Elements in Horsham. And her trusty assistant Maya, thank you guys. Really you guys appreciate it. Thank Everybody's you. saying thank you. So have a great day, everybody. Bye, and everybody. Great. Thank you so much for your time. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye. Do you remember? No. Wait. Oh, no.